Hi guys, this is Madeline from Pocket Behavior. Today I am going to be talking about ways to improve your dog's confidence for um, specifically for fearful dogs. So if you watch my podcast episode, which I will link in the description down below, I um, I talked about all the different ways you can you can recognize um, if your dog is being fearful or not. It's all about body language. I mean, body language is how our dogs communicate. So today I want to show you some games on how to improve your dog's confidence and become less fearful. The first game that I have for you is called a noise box. So I literally just have a bunch of toilet paper rolls, empty cans, you know, and anything that would typically just go in the trash, if I'm being completely honest, or recycle. Um, all I do is, Murphy, good morning. I would sprinkle a couple pieces of food in here and let him figure them out. Did you get it already? I didn't put much in there. Here you go. So I didn't put much in there because it gets kind of noisy. But that's really the only game. Um, you can you can use this for his meal instead of putting his food in a bowl. It's I mean it's a whole bucket. It'll it'll fit, <laughs> and it it will take them a little bit longer because they have to search in it, and it improves their confidence because the cans in there are they're really loud. They're really noisy, especially if you have your head in there. So. What I actually had to do for my German Shepherd was I had to only put in paper towel, empty paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls, you know, things that made a little bit of noise, but are not a lot of noise. And then eventually we added one can, two cans, three cans, and I don't even know how many cans we have now. And eventually you can start adding, you know, two liters or only cans or, you know, it's, it's completely variable. And there will be some dogs that won't even try or will be too afraid to try um, with just the toilet paper rolls. And that's perfectly normal, that's fine. Um, you can play this game with nothing in it and then you know gradually grow more of more of what you put in there. And it's, it's a, a gradual thing. The next game that I have is called the muzzle game. So I have both a cone and a muzzle. And Murphy has not played this game before, so this is gonna be interesting. Hey, buddy, can you get back on your corner? Thank you. Murphy. Thank you. So I am going to present the cone, and if he interacts with it in any way, then I'm going to reward that. Eventually, what I want is for him to put his face in the cone and get really, really good at that, and then I will transition to the muzzle and play the same game with the muzzle and it translates very well to dogs accepting muzzles. So, Murphy. Yes, good boy. Buddy. Yes. So I'm very bad at this, but you have to remember to take the cone away and represent it each repetition. Otherwise, some dogs just don't correlate what's going on. Yes, good boy. So he's, I, 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 he has never done this with the muzzle, but he's done this one other time with the cone. Ready? Yes. So some people might not teach it this way, but this is how I teach it, just because it it really progresses the learning quickly. <laughs> so what I do is I put a piece of food in the cone, and then I let them, you know, they have to put their, their face in there to get the food. And that just builds value for the cone very quickly. If you don't wanna do that, that's fine. Um, all you would have to do is reward any interaction with you know, the outside of the cone. Yes. Yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna try the muzzle. 
This is one of my other dog's muzzles, so it probably won't fit him if I even try to put it on him. But I'm not trying to put it on him. I'm just trying to get him to put his face in it. Yes. So this time, I'm going to reward any interaction with the muzzle because I really want to put emphasis on how valuable the muzzle is. Okay, so there, since he is not really picking it up, that's perfectly fine, but I'm going to try something else, and this is what I did with my other dogs as well. I, um, I fed them through the muzzle. There you go, good boy. So, um, since the muzzle, I'm not sure if you can see, has holes in it, they, um, they can pant, drink water, eat with the muzzle on, so it is very safe for them. Excuse you. Can you please not eat that? Hey, can you go back to your time? These basket muzzles are perfect for for your dogs. You don't want to use something that, you know, holds their mouth closed because it can, it's very stressful for them, especially because along the bridge of their nose here, there's a ton of, you know, nerves and sensitive places. So it could actually, it's, they can create, you know, adverse effects to it. They could come to hate the muzzle because of it. And not to mention, since they are having their mouth kept closed, they can't pant, they can't eat, they can't, it, it's just a way to increase stress, in my opinion, for dogs. Okay, so I'm going to show you this again with the muzzle. All right, can you come over here? Thank you. Becky. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Good job. Yeah. Oops. Yes, good boy. Oops, you can get that. All right, and that is one game. And then the next game that I'm going to show you is a, um, a chin target. So with this game, hey, Murphy, can you come over to your time? This is kind of just a behavior um, for Murphy specifically when he is going to be going to a vet in the future. He will be required to place his chin on your hand so that he can check out his teeth, eyes, ears, you know, stuff like that. So how I teach this is by feeding, placing my hand underneath his chin. Let's see if I can get a better angle. All right, come over here, buddy. Placing my hand under his chin and feeding down. So he is putting pressure on my hand. He's not very cooperative. Okay. So my hand's under his chin and I'm feeding down. I don't release the food until my hand is under. Once my hand goes away, excuse you. Once my hand goes away, then the feeding stops. Eventually, what I'll be able to do is I'll have food in my hand. You have to stay in front of me, bud. Yes, I'm right here. Please sit. Thank you. Please 
think it's me that you have to sit. Uh-uh. Right. The food is away. I place my hand out under his chin and I start feeding. I take my hand away and I'm done feeding. Then I'll be able to place my hand out. He'll put his chin in my hand to anticipate the feeding about to start and that's when I give them the reward because he put his hand in my chin. His chin in my hand, my bad. Yes. Good boy. So for the majority of the time, he had his, his, the tip of his chin on the, on my first finger, Murphy. So I didn't want to reward that because I want a full chin on my hand, like his whole under, his whole chin. Here, sit down. So don't reward what you don't want. It's really simple. Because if you reward what you don't want, then he's going to anticipate, you know, more and more of that. So these are some games that can get you started. Can you go back to your bed? Back to your bed. Thank you. These are some games that can get you started for um, building confidence within your dog. I'm sure further on along, I'll, sh I'll start showing you a lot more um, you know, uh, games that you can play, but these are just a few that I wanted to show you right now that can get you started. They're really easy to do. They don't take a lot of time, as you can see, um, and they're just really small things that you can do to start implementing confidence within your dog. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel so that you can see all my new episodes. I post new videos on uh, Thursday and I also post new videos to my podcast on Friday, on my bad, on Tuesday. <laughs> and the podcast videos will correlate to what games I, I show on my YouTube channel.